This is the Dungeon Master's Handbook. Hi everyone, it's Michael, and welcome to the next episode of Dungeon Master's Handbook. It's going to be a quick and a call-in episode. Um, it's November 13th when I'm recording this, and I'm actually recording this out in my garage, so we'll see how the sound quality is. I'm recording on my cell phone as usual. I don't have the space or ability to do a professional podcaster setup, so... Yeah, you get what you get. Um, I've been pretty busy. Let's see. Um, well, uh, I've been you know, finishing up unpacking from the moving. Um, in October, I had Game Hole Con. Um, I was doing some painting of the house, you know, other things like that. Um, getting ready for the upcoming deer season, which we're now in the middle of. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> busy and just kind of one of those, I didn't have much to say and I'm not a regular content provider. I kind of do it when I feel it. So uh, this episode is to answer some call-ins uh, from Jason, from a new caller, and then from Menyon, Rob. So let's get started with Jason of Nerds RPG Variety Cast. Hey, Michael, Jason here. Sorry to let you down on the topics for OSR October. I think you picked up a great one. I mean, I try to highlight, you know, the positive forces in the hobby and look at some of the great products that are out there and point people to things they might not be aware of in the OS, OSR sphere. Very smart, avoiding the topic of what is the OSR. It's very contentious, and I think it's counterproductive to <laughs> continue that that argument from either side of it. I think OSR ultimately is going to, you know, it's been used by so many different people for so many different things, and, it, it, you know, it is what it is, but you, you know what you consider OSR. I know what I consider OSR, and, you know, so do other people, and so... Maybe look for, don't just look at the, the tag OSR, but actually pay a little bit of attention to the product, what it's compatible with, or what they're espousing when, when you're looking at products. But yeah, I try to point out products and, and neat things. I'm going to talk to some creators in the OSR sphere and, and just try to point out why people may want to try that play style if, they're not, if they haven't done that play style before. So that's kind of what I'm doing for OSR October. I sounds like the move is is going well. I'm glad to hear that. Moving's never fun, but hey, you've got a house with a trap door, so that's pretty fun. Anyhow, I will talk to you soon. Take care. All right. Hey, Jason, thanks for that call in. Uh, appreciate it. I am sorry it took a month or more to reply to you. <laughs> um, I've been busy. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. You know, you do good work highlighting products, um, and and I really appreciate that you did that for OSR October. I am the worst person to highlight new products. I I don't buy them. So uh, thank you for what you do, because I know that's a valuable service, and I know a lot of people appreciate knowing what's going on in the RPG world. Um, you know, r regarding um, my own introducing people into the old school uh, style of playing, I'm hoping that when things get quiet for me in early 2024, um, you know, after deer season, before turkey season and camping season and <laughs> all that stuff, um, I'm hoping to run a marathon at one of the local gaming stores in the... Uh, far northwest Illinois or maybe the northeast um, Iowa corner, maybe in Dubuque. Uh, there's a couple of game stores there. And I'd like to do an old school D&D &D marathon like I had done in Chicago back in the day. That's where I'll sit down from the moment the store opens until they close and I'll run a module. Um, something, you know, like B1 or um, In Search of the Unknown or B2, Keeping the Borderlands, maybe X1, Isle of Dread. 
Because those are all nice games where people can drop in and play and then get up and leave and someone can come and take over their pre-generated character. And that's exactly what the way I do it. Um, you know, maybe I should put that on a podcast episode later on about running marathons. But anyway, I think I'm going to do that and, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I like introducing people to the old school way of playing and I find that running these marathons is kind of a fun thing. Plus, if I can get uh, folks to sponsor maybe dice or, you know, some sort of freebie kind of thing, uh, it gets them involved and gets them excited. Hey, you played D&D for an hour and you survived. Here's a pair of dice, you know, something like that. Anyway, um, yes, the trap door is so awesome. Um, I have a legitimate trap. For those of you listening, I have a legitimate trap door that leads down to my basement, and it looks something straight out of a scary horror movie. Um, everyone loves that creepy view and uh, the, the deep stairs down into the darkness Whoa, kind of thing. But uh, we're getting the stairs redone because they're really uncomfortable to walk down. So it won't be as scary, but there still will be the trap doors. So that's cool. All right. And next we have Bosman Boz of the Border Baronies blog, who's calling in about my episode 61 od and and Holmes. So Bosman Boz, take it away. Good morning, Michael. I was listening to your episode on the difference between OD and D and Holmes, and I think I can help you a bit regarding what you said about I don't know where the nine point alignment came from because I just wrote a blog post about this myself. I found an old copy of the strategic review, particularly the one from February 76 in which uh, Gygax says he thinks that the original alignment system he made was a mistake. And in that article, he argues for a five-point alignment system with chaotic good, lawful good, uh, chaotic evil, lawful evil, and neutral. So while it's not actually the nine-point alignment system yet, I think it's a good a transitory step between the original three-point alignment system and what we would see later on in AD and D. Hope this might help you in some way. Hey, thank you very much for uh, sending that to me. That was sent to me by email. And uh, Bosman, I'm sorry it took me so long to uh, answer you back. Uh, so strategic review, February uh, 1976. I think that that is such an interesting historical article where you get to see Gary talk about the rules of OD&D as he's going through this churn of the Three Little Brown books and Greyhawk and how he's really trying to figure out the rules for himself. Um, you know, and, and you see part of that with him talking about his struggles with alignment. So I, I think that's kind of cool. And, it, and, it, and it's a reminder that, you know, um, as much as we like to think that, you know, everything kind of sprang forth and there was just this natural progression, there really wasn't. It was quite a chaotic from, you know, what I pick up from reading uh, things written by Gary and others. It was a chaotic kind of assembly of D&D and how it grew in fits and starts and depending on what was uh, input and what people's experiences were. Um, I'm going to put a link to Bosman Boz's post on alignment. I think it's a really neat and analysis that actually dives into the works of Cicero and his writings on natural law and how you can apply that to D&D alignment. I thought that was kind of fascinating. Um, for me, I've always found law and chaos to be metaphysical and elemental and really just the realm of clerics and deities. I, you know, I, for everyone else, the you know, they're pretty much neutral, maybe trending towards lawful, but, um, yeah. So anyway, thanks again for the call. And next we have, surprise, surprise, Jason again. Hey, Michael, Jason here. Enjoyed the Infinite Barrel Monkeys episode. That's a great way of going through and adapting modules for your campaign and your groups. Really enjoyed it. And I look forward to a future episode where you take a module 
and do this with that module to show folks step by step. Thank you so much for continuing to put out good content and staying positive. It's really appreciated. Take care. Talk to you soon. Jason, you are my first SpeakPipe user. Thank you very much. I'm glad to know it works. Um, thank you for that comment. Um, I'm thinking actually about doing a Dark Suns or Dragonlance module as a way of showing how I take a module and break it down and essentially turn it into a sandbox kind of setting. Um, what would you advise? You know, um, I'd really like to take something that is viewed as a railroady module and turn it into something that isn't a railroad. Um, do you have any suggestions? And anyone else that's listening, what would you suggest um, I use as a module to convert from railroading into an infinite barrel of monkeys? I'd be interested in knowing. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll actually buy a product. <laughs> anyway, Jason, thanks again. And last but not least, we have Rob Menyon from a We Timorous Bushy podcast. Hey Michael, this is Rob, also known as Many. I'm calling from Confessions of a Wee Timorous Bushy. Thank you for your uh, very interesting episode on the, I think we called it the Infinite Barrel of Monkeys. What I had in mind actually was something a little bit more uh, drastic than what you seem to be considering. You, your idea actually is a a very thoughtful like deconstruction of the module and then rebuilding it in a way that makes sense to the individual DM, which is a fantastic idea. I, I thought you were going more towards just using bits and pieces from various modules and pulling out the ones that most fit your uh, campaign or adventure and, you know, dealing with material that way, you know, using a map you like, using an, an encounter you like, that that kind of thing. Yeah, you've gone, seem to have gone more for a... a um, yeah, the construction of, of the adventure and then breaking down the adventure into its component, what what you as the individual DM sees as the, you know, the, the key elements of the adventure and then reconstructing it in a way that that suits your campaign style and the, the way that the adventure unfolds at the table, which is obviously, you know, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, and probably better than just sort of ripping bits out of adventures. I think I need a little bit more time to think about this, though. But uh, again, thank you so much for the for the uh, episode, and um, I hope to continue this uh, conversation a little bit more. Hey, Rob, thanks for that call. Um, to be fair, I do exactly that as well as what you suggest. I steal lots of bits and pieces from modules. Um, and use them. In fact, one of the ones that made a huge impact in my game was I stole from the old Goodman Dungeon Crawl Classics module number two, the Lost Vault of Z Zath Zaro. Um, this became the setting for my AD&D campaign. Um, really major events happened there. Uh, players got to know some very interesting bits and prevent a uh, dark one from entering into the world. Um, and that was a module written for 3E. So <laughs> I very much stripped it of all of its 3E parts and kept the map and kept the bits and pieces and went forward with it. Um, the deconstruction I've done more for other... Um, other modules. So uh, one is X2, Castle Amber. Now, Castle Amber was written in kind of a pseudo, I don't want to say it was a railroad, but it was definitely a linear kind of game where it assumed that you were going to take a particular path through the uh, module. And I don't want to give any other spoilers, but um, I definitely, you know, stripped it down and, and redid things so that it was more of a standalone. The players could come at it with a lot of different uh, solutions. Um, and I've done that also for, um, you know, T1 Village of Hamlet. I talked about that. And I'm also going to do it for the T2 Temple of Elemental Evil 
when I eventually get back to getting around to designing my um, my war game slash uh, RPG uh, interpretation of the whole uh, Temple of Elemental Evil um, game set. So yeah, um, we'll see how it goes. And as I had mentioned to uh, Jason's or an answer to Jason earlier. If you have a suggestion for a particular module that you'd like to see me deconstruct, let me know. I'd be really curious. All right, so that's it. Uh, thank you to all my call-ins. That was Jason from Nerds RPG Variety Cast twice, Bosman Boz of the Border Baronies blog, and Menyon Rob of a Wee Timorous Bushy podcast. Um, if you would like to reach out, leave a comment, or um, you know, just say hi. There's the ways to do it in my show notes, and likewise, feel free to email me or reach out to me on Mastodon. So until next time, game on.